I'm your host, Steve Mitchell Bell, and we have here in the studio Miss Joy Ike. Hi, Joy. How are you? Hey, good. Doing great. I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad you found it. And um, normally, uh, we uh, we just dig in and play something right off the top to kind of loosen the nerves up. And, okay. Uh, so, uh, what did you have in mind? Um. All right. I think I'm going to play a song called "Eat It All Up." Okay. This is Joy Ike on Acoustic Songs Live. Too. <laughs> I can't wait to see the video. That's cool. I could I could hear. Is this going to be on the new record? Um, it's actually on, on an older record. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I feel stupid. Now. <laughs> it's um, okay. Is it on rumors? Um, it's on rumors. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on. I I was thinking. I just hear this triangle in there. There has to be a triangle. Uh, no? I think there are some high pitched things <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> I can just hear something like that. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I've been, I've been, you know, wanting to have you in the studio for a while, and we've, uh, you know, tried to arrange that here and there, and finally your schedule worked out. So. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. So. And thanks for coming. You have a show tonight too. Yeah, Club Cafe in the South Side. So you're like rushing around. I know. Like you're probably gonna rush over there to get ready and. Yeah, because as soon as I leave here, I mean, I probably have an hour window to kind of get some things together before heading over so wow yeah and that starts at that starts at it's actually at 7 p.m. but the doors are at 6 in Brooke Annabelle and Brooke Annabelle is it, gonna be splitting the evening with me awesome mm -hmm. awesome I'm gonna try to make it I don't know we'll see I hope you the, can with the, with the sick family I was telling you about all week yeah. you know it's like trying to trying to juggle all that it's tough yeah. I'm glad I still have a voice though. It's just yeah. it's barely there. I can hear that stuff you know so. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> so the so the um I was we were talking about this a little bit. We met a long time ago and I think it was like two thousand five. Mm -hmm. And I've watched your career gradually just go, you know, mm -hmm. building and building and building. You know, you've 
you've gone from playing locally here and being a local Pittsburgh songwriter to now you've branched out to mm -hmm. the big like Apple. I remember like saying to you like you gotta go play New York. Uh, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> and now you're like funny. all over it, right? Yeah. What's funny is that I I do I go to New York regularly but you know I'm still in that same mindset that I was several years ago I hate New York <laughs> it's terrible I, I know but it's just it's a tough city you know and I think it'll always be that way do, do you find it invigorating or do you find it like I have to get out of here it's just oh it's it's always like as soon as I finish my show I'm out the door you know oh really yeah it's... I usually head over to Philly my sister lives in Philadelphia so it's just there's just too much there and it doesn't it, yeah. kill to me in any way <laughs> I, I can't imagine living there. I have friends yeah. that live there and, and deal with that just just yeah. swarm of humanity that just comes at you when you cross the street. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. all of a sudden you have hundreds of people who are just gonna mow you down. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> true. But to its benefit, I mean New York is so creative. It's just like it's the creativity is an atmosphere. People are so so appreciative of the arts, you know, and it's something that you can't really find you can't really find that brand of city anywhere else, yeah. anywhere else. So um, your songwriting influences, um, we were talking a little bit about this earlier. Uh, well, let's go, first of all, uh, w there's some things I was asking you about, I don't know why I was under the impression that you moved here from Nigeria or <laughs> something to that effect, but you grew up in the United States and mm -hmm. and uh, you're, and I was also under the impression that your your dad was a, a minister, and he was like, no, he's an accountant. You know, so I, I know a little bit about your background and so forth. And so you grew up in the East End, and I did. Yeah, I grew up. In fact, I grew up in Greenfield. I went to uh, Taylor Alderdice High School. Oh, wow. uh, so I've always been pretty local. And um, I don't know. Sometimes I tell people that I don't necessarily feel like a Pittsburgher. But I think that has a lot to do with just, you know, growing up around a, like a really large Nigerian community and and kind of feeling like someone who was in the middle of two different worlds, you know, this American world and the Nigerian world and culture, too, you know. So so kind of a displaced feeling to a certain extent. So there's a extended Nigerian community in, in the East End? Is that what... Well, there is a huge Nigerian community in Pittsburgh in general. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, huh. I had no idea. The... Um, Growing up in the East End, though, um, we had checked into that, and uh, you know, the, the uh, just like the cool place to live. I think. <laughs> yeah, in, you in know, general, I'm crazy about the East End, and I think um, the only other neighborhood that I would probably move to is the North Side. I think the North Side has a lot of personality, and to each his own. Every every neighborhood is really is really cool and different, and I think the people are what make it what it is. So. Yeah, I just feel like, like we were talking about New York that there's just this creative vibe that's there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that, yeah. And you can go like so many different places, and I don't know. There's that certain like sitting in a coffee shop in the East End and writing something. Yeah. Um, to me, it feels kind of like that same vibe that you would get in the village or something like yeah, that. Yeah, kind of definitely. Feeling, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And a lot of people that live over there. Our, our friends, you know. That. Yeah, whenever I hop up the street um, to different coffee shops in the in that general area, you know, I see so many people working on their laptops, and I, and I think, okay, yeah, he's a writer. Um, he is, you know, doing some brainstorming for a project, and I start to decide what everyone's what everyone's doing. But everyone kind of has this like artsy vibe vibe about them. And the uh, you know the the schools, obviously, all the students that come in there, so it's just this youthful kind of mm -hmm. feeling, you know, it's, yeah. you know, I, where I live, it's just boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so in, in growing up, uh, who were some of your, you know, songwriting influences and stuff that you, uh, what? Hmm. Well, we were talking a little bit earlier. Um, Sarah McLaughlin was one of the artists that I listened to a lot in high school. Um, and I really, there was something about the quality of her voice that, you know, just dr always drew me in. Um, and I just, her songs were just so deep and so pure. Um, and it was just smooth, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so I think, I feel like my music is probably a byproduct of, um, of listening to her and several other female artists. I know one of the very first female artists um, that I was really excited about was um, Gwen Stefani. <laughs> and the first time I heard No Doubt on the radio, I was just like, whoa, that's awesome. And then thinking about how, like, how powerful her voice was and how powerful her presence was. 
And another artist that I really was a huge fan of as a teenager was Jennifer Knapp. I just thought she was just so, she was just like so in her element, you know, mm -hmm. and just like so confident in what she was doing. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think those are some of the few um, few artists that I listened to in my earlier days. That that ice cream song from Sarah McLachlan that was one of Katie's favorites when she grew up. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't know. Yeah. Better than ice cream, but you know that. Ah, no, I don't. It's oh, funny, so really? ice cream. Oh, right. <laughs> there are like a couple songs that she sang when she was little. So <laughs> but were you drawn to keyboard players just because you played keyboard? Is that where how you started out playing on keyboard? I know you play uh, ukulele now, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm learning the ukulele. I'm not very good, admittedly, but I think it'll just take time. But um. Yeah, I, I don't know that I was necessarily drawn to piano players. I think my parents made us all take piano lessons growing up. So it was kind of by default, it just existed in our lives for as long as I can remember. But um, I think I was just always, I'd always been drawn to uh, the simplicity in music. You know, girl, guy with a guitar type music and girl with piano. Mm -hmm. um, and I just have always loved a good voice, you know. Mm -hmm. A good voice and good lyrics, so that was always most important to me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, would you be able to play an, a, another song for us? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live from WNJR Studios at 91.7 FM in Washington, Pennsylvania, and we stream live at WNJR.org. And we have Joy Ike in the studio, and uh, Joy's playing some tunes for us and talking a little bit. What are you going to do for us? Um, this song is uh, called Nomad. And what album is this song? This is also on Rumors. Okay. <laughs>
children live like we poor nomads and our kids will know the meaning of love the world and love thy God and it won't grow old and it won't grow I mean, I've heard it, but I wasn't sure what the title was. Oh, thank that's, you. That's, no, really, that's just great. And you call it soul folk. Soul folk. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's just like so jazzy, you know, like you, so much rhythm there. And, and at the beginning I heard you like, you know, doing You just have, you know, you have the, I was thinking, wow, peace should be here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because um, when I first started playing out, I was I was super nervous. I was like so nervous to be on stage, um, and I never wanted to be on stage without my sister. Um, Peace is a drummer for anyone listening in, um, and so I would, you know, she would have so much other, so many other things going on. But I was just like, can you please just make time to play this show with me? So percussion was always there, and I just always hear drums in my head all the time. So. To not have it, you know, whether they're real drums or just something that's kind of keeping me going and pacing me, um, it's just a weird feeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can. Well, I can imagine because um, I don't know. Maybe it's guitar is a little bit more percussion, or yeah, acoustic guitar has that kind of, you know. It's true. It does. You know, yeah. like you're almost playing a, a wood box yeah. at the same time you're playing strings. So there's, and so I don't think in like, you know, I kind of think. In, I don't know. No. It, 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 I have the opposite thing happen where I'm actually probably playing too much rhythm in terms of like giving it more space. I see. Okay. Yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. I could hear the space in between the yeah. you're playing the, the chords. Yeah. And, you know. yeah. yeah. So the, the but we were talking a little bit about um, your background and and growing up. And did you start singing in the church? Is that the is that when it happened? Like in the choir or or how did it? I remember singing as a kid in church, but I do remember every um, every Saturday as a little kid, um, my dad would go, we would, he would take my sister and I to the nursing home, which was about, you know, 10, 15 minutes from the church I grew up, and we would sing hymns every morning to them, um, and we'd probably be there for like two or three hours just singing hymns, you know, and hanging out with people. Um, and I don't even know if it was some type of official, like, ministry, but my dad always um, went and always took us with him and my sister and I we would drag our feet there every week and we weren't we weren't really excited to be there but I feel like that was like um, really formative for me you know that was one of the things that really stuck with me um, and has stuck with me up until this point and so I just always had this love for singing and I never there were met, in most cases I didn't have a song in mind but I was always humming just all the time humming so it, it are there any kids that really like to go to church, really, when you think about it? I mean, so. I don't know. I guess I'm a kid. It really depends. I mean. Oh, no. Come uh, on. Yeah. Cartoons are on her. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I grew up, my, my grandmother was a, um, the piano player at Sunday school. Oh, okay. And so she would play uh, piano at her Sunday school class, and then she would go up and play for the regular uh, uh, service yeah. and we would you know go through our sunday class and stuff and so yeah. that was kind of cool you know like, it's like that's my grandma uh, she's, she's, you know jesus loves me and all the songs that we all sing that you know and uh, so i would i would imitate the old guys singing and they would sing in a really deep voice you know like that you know so i'd hear them and then i'd try to imitate them and uh so they said oh you yeah, know you should sing and, uh, <laughs> I got up to sing one time at Sunday school and talk about stage fright. Mm -hmm. Everybody turned around and looked at me. Mm -hmm. And I just went <gasps> and sat back down. Yeah. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I, I totally just froze. I couldn't sing yeah. anything. Yeah. Stage fright is such a funny thing. It yeah. almost never really leaves you. I don't know. 
Yeah, you, it's an energy that you can you can go with. Uh, you know, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's because uh, when when you have when you uh, connect with an audience, it's like the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a feeling of like it's like being in, in church. It's just yeah. like this, wow, this energy just happens. That's the scariest part to me when that happens. When, when you notice that everybody's actually paying attention, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's the scariest it's part. If they're not paying attention, it's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. with you on that. But all of a sudden, you know, it's real quiet, and they're listening to everything you're saying, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay, I'm making. I actually have to know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you're in the process of recording a new album, right? Mm -hmm. And. That is, you're doing it in New York, is that right? Um, yeah, the, the producer I'm working with uh, lives in, uh, has a studio in Brooklyn, so I've been going back and forth there over the last few months. No, you know, plug them or uh, plug the studio? Or oh, well, there? you know, it's actually a home studio. Oh, okay. Saul Simon, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not even sure if the studio actually has a name, but he's been, a, he's been so much fun to work with, and he's really pulled me out of my box, you know, when I think a the last few albums that I've worked on, um, it's been, it's been this thing where I, I feel like I'm kind of I've kind of been the producer behind it, mm -hmm. um, and I guess I didn't really understand how much um, how much an official producer plays in the role of an album until I started working with Saul, uh, and he just brings so many creative ideas to the table, um, and so this album definitely has a, a different flavor. You know, it still has you know that Joy Ike sound, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's very fresh, and so I'm just really excited to share it with the world. So you you did all your last records. You pretty much produced it. You mm -hmm. you. You had an idea of how you wanted everything to sound. Yeah, um, for the most part. I mean, I took a lot of a lot of um, uh, several opinions from my bass player and the sound engineer that I was working with, and just anyone who had kind of any creative role in the process. Mm -hmm. um, but it was definitely um, for me. I feel like the last two albums were really really burdens for me to a certain extent because I don't like being in the studio, and there are a million and one decisions to make. Um, everything from what drum head you want to use to produce the right sound to um, whether the the string instrument is going to slur its note or play its staccato or you know all those little things that like my brain just explodes and I can't think of you know you know I have a general idea of how I want things to sound but I don't sometimes know those details so I really appreciate um, working with this uh, producer okay so I, I, I got it like you had the stuff worked out and then in your head, you have a general idea of yeah. how you want it to sound, but then you get in, and it's like there's there are a lot of other yeah. kind of. But as far as the engineering part, do you work any of that stuff out like at, at home or any of that kind of like garage band or any of that kind of tools beforehand before you kind of get a. With the core of the band, like the piano, upright bass, and drums, you know, we would always work out our kinks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But I found like a lot of the a lot of the extra work and extra thought came into all those other auxiliary instruments and all those things that added to it, mm. trying to figure out what, um, just like what would work, you know, for the moment and how to translate a live performance to a studio performance. So, um, yeah, it's always been a lot of work, but this album, this current album, has just really excited me because I feel like the burden has kind of been shared between myself and my producer, and um, it's just been a really great um, relationship and um, experience. So the... the trust that you need to have with the producer like you're turning something over to to them that is amazing like you really oh, man. <laughs> you know, is that yeah. what you're is that what you're finding now that you're, you're, you're doing you're able to do that you're yeah. able to trust and solid. you know what trust is oh, trust is the key word like i think that was probably what i struggled with most over the past few years um wanting to trust someone else with something that is so important to me you know mm -hmm. i mean it's like it's so much a part of my identity i feel like mm -hmm. so being having to turn that over to someone else and a third party um was very hard but i think i'm just learning how important and how much benefit comes out of doing something like that i i uh, i know exactly what that i know what that feels like mm -hmm. yeah and you have this you have this thing it's like this creation and then you go don't play around with it. Yeah. You know, and then they come up with some other thing, and you go like, oh, okay. Yeah. It makes sense. And you're, yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes it takes a few listens. You know, the first time, just like, oh, I didn't expect it to sound like this. I don't like it. And then, I'm, you know, two or three listens later, I'm just like, wow, this is actually pretty different, you know, and it's pretty unique, and I think I think I really like it. So. Well, I'm, I'm just, like, totally amazed at everything that you've, 
accomplished in the time that I've known you from just going from, you know, I know you were playing opening for somebody and, uh, and um, now, you know, you're like four or five, what, three, four or five records in. So from like, yeah, so, yeah. And, and every, everyone is just so much, there's so much more to it. You know, yeah. I hear it, I go, go, wow, that's awesome. You want to play something else for us? Yeah. I would really like it. Maybe yeah. I'll play something that's going to go on the new album. That'd be cool. Yeah, and this is actually, um, the song is called Time. And while it's going to be on the new album, I do have a couple versions that I put out um, over Valentine's Day last year. And um, it's a love song that I wrote for someone. It was actually a Kickstarter reward for um, someone who donated to my Kickstarter, and I wrote a song for their wedding. Um, but we've got a different version that's going to be on the album. And so this is a song that's called Time.
it's awesome. awesome. Thank the you. Tick, tick, like the end, that just the sense of the tick 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 clock ticking. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like an anticipation song. It feels like to me. <laughs> so I was um, just looking over your uh, professional bio now. Um, you were on NPR, like All Things Considered. Yeah, this was this was in two, the early 2010. Um, someone emailed emailed me and asked me. It was. Um, an intern that was working at the station who used to come to my shows when she was a student at Pitt. Um, and she was working at the station and had submitted my, my music to her boss for consideration. Um, and so that's kind of how that whole thing happened. It was NPR in New York or what state? Um, in D.C. Oh, in D.C., okay. I wasn't, yeah. And um, I saw that you opened for uh, Jeffrey Gaines. Was that cool? That was. Uh, it was quite an experience. Man. <laughs> I heard him on the radio back in, uh, I lived out in Seattle, like, 91, and that song, uh, Hero and Me, came on. Uh, okay. And I said, who is that guy? Uh, I mean, I've been a fan of his since then. He's, yeah. Um, you know, he's a Pennsylvania guy, you know? Like, yeah. Grew up around Harrisburg and stuff. Yeah, he's an incredible performer. We, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to talk to him. Yeah. No? He, yeah, he came after, after the, show, the show started, so... We um, probably saw him, you know, walking about five minutes after, before our set was up, before he was supposed to go on. So. Oh, man. Yeah. And so I've seen him three times, um, and uh, every show is really great. Yeah. And he, he is really, you know, I really enjoy his stuff. Yeah, he's something special. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, this is the last show before the election. <laughs> You know, next, next week, week it's, it's, it's all over. Yeah. You won't have to listen to any of this stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to sit there and watch ad after ad after ad after ad. I just pause the TV and fast forward. Um, but I would like to say that there are the top ten reasons to vote for Joy. <laughs> more vote for Ike, more for me. Yeah, I, I, I love the campaign. I, I, you know, I really, I thought maybe I would... You know, hit you up for a hat or something. You know, <laughs> and I could do the interview with the I like I had and over the election. Well, I missed about this year, but maybe in the next four years, I'll next time in four years, I'll create those I like I like buttons. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a great marketing idea, though. I really, I that's I really love your marketing stuff that you do, like with the. Um, Tell, Tell everybody, everybody about Grassrootsy. Uh, I um I have this website like, called Grassrootsy. It's grassrootsy.com, and um, I I, I kind of geek out over marketing and branding and um, I don't know just finding ways to make information stick in people's heads and um, and so I started this marketing music marketing site. Um, a, about four years ago, it's four years ago this month, and so I post a couple times a week and give artists ideas on how to promote themselves. So. It's kind of my little side project. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's really popular, too, though. Uh, you do have a lot of subscribers. Yeah, we do have a lot of subscribers. We get a lot of hits every month. And I mean, without them, I wouldn't keep it, I wouldn't keep it going because it's a labor of love. It doesn't bring any income in. It's just kind of, you know, what I like to do. So I, uh, that's, that's what this is for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can have one of those at least in your life. Yeah, yeah. I love finding new music. I love, always have. You know, yeah. I, I mean... I was always ahead of the curve finding this stuff, you know, yeah. like, no matter who it was. Yeah. You know, it's all you got to check these guys out. And, mm -hmm. you know, three, six months later, all of a sudden, boom. They blow up. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I, I love yeah. doing that. And I don't, I don't have as much time now to, like, to devote to that. You know? right. But uh, this, 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 is, this, is this is just in the Pittsburgh area alone. If, if I so go through the Rolodex, yeah, yeah, just to, like, look through, yeah. um, I think I went down to Club Cafe one night um, for Acoustic Cafe and, you know, I had three or four people from that mm -hmm. alone that I heard, like, we were talking about Broken Fences yeah. and um, Pete Bush has come on and um, just people that, you know, I've known for years and then I find out from someone else about somebody else and mm -hmm. they're really, I, I'm, I'm just really impressed by the level of talent that there is. Yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah, there is. Pittsburgh has some incredible quality musicians, and um, it's, it's just, just a great, great place, place to, to live and cultivate your art, I think, as an artist. It is. It's, it's nurturing. nurturing. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and everybody, everybody kind of uh, supports seat. Everybody has. Yeah. Actually, I think Acoustic Cafe can take a lot of credit for that, too, because Acoustic Cafe has just set a really great, you know, not just an event, but just a community. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just shout out to Mark Wilson and, yeah. and everybody yeah. involved yeah. in yeah. Acoustic yeah. Cafe. Yeah. Um, so, so tonight, tonight you have a show at uh, Club, Club Cafe. Cafe. Mm-hmm. And then and tomorrow? Um, yeah, tomorrow we'll be playing in the north side um, at a creamery up there called uh, Cafe and Creamery. And um, it's, it's in the Marshall Shadeland area. It's right on Shadeland Avenue. Hmm. And um, it's, it's just a really, it's just a really great place. Um, it's actually connected to a church down the block called New Hope, and they've been doing these huge community events um, every other month, and they've just been getting great turnouts and just a really great way to inspire the kids and families in the neighborhood. That's cool. I, I, I don't, I don't think I know of uh, that place, Cafe and Creamery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. And then, um, so go to your website, which is. Joyike.com, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll we'll give you a list of where. Because I noticed you've been playing a lot of shows, and Lancaster seems to be like your favorite place now, and, yeah. and, and, and Philadelphia and Eastern, Eastern Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yeah, and DC. Yeah, I am. Um, I, 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 I do go to Lancaster, Lancaster a lot. It's just a, it's a homey place, it's kind of a home away from home. So, and try and hit up as many other um, as many other cities as I can in that general region and area. Milk, Milk Boy Coffee. Coffee. That's, uh, yeah, I see this show coming up. up. It's a cool place. place. I've, they, there used to be, um, oh, it was, it was in Bryn Mawr, um, The Point. Oh. And it closed. Yeah, I've heard of that. It was, it was, um, it was like one of those places, like a, a listening room where, um, uh, Jackson, Jackson Brown played in the 70s and all, all these artists came, came in and played. And, uh, it closed, it closed down, down, which was really, Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, Jim Boja and um, Bill Deasy there uh, opened for Jim Boja back in like, you know, moved around so much. It's yeah. Like crazy. Um, yeah. 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 So, um, would you like to do something else for us? Yeah. I'll have another song. Cool. Um, this song is called Happy Bullets. Let me, uh, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live at WNJR.org and 91.7 FM here in Washington. We have uh, Joy Ike in the studio, and she's doing some songs for us. How she floats.
Um, you know, you know there's, there's, there's so many, so many things, things that have changed from just sharing music, music to giving away music for free. To, um, yeah. and it's just it's, it's, it's a whole different world, world out there. Yeah. So um, actually, when anything, anything comes up that changes, changes and it's new, there's, there's going to be folks that are you know, going, going both. both. Like, oh, oh no, that's, that's a bad, bad idea. idea. Right? right. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I hear you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the only alternative to doing it. If, if you want, want to put out a good product, product you have to do it in a good studio. Mm -hmm. You can't just plug the microphone into the back of your sound card. And, you yeah. see it. and I, I think, think that's, that's one thing that people, people don't really understand. understand. I mean, and no fault to them. They, they, I mean, if you're in one world, world you don't really understand all the, the jargon and all the technical aspects, aspects and all the things that happen to make something in another world happen, you know? Like, I don't understand politics. I don't understand uh, accounting, you know, you know, I don't understand yeah. how much stuff. So, so I, I, think I think sometimes people are just like, what do you need all that money for? But there's just so, there's so much that goes into making an album that people will never think of. Everything from just paying the musicians um, to um, paying the producer in the studio that you're working with um, to be able, being able to like press hard copies, having the manufacturer print hard copies submitting to digital distribution and promoting, which, I mean, if you don't promote, then no one knows about your album. So that's one of the most, that's probably the most important part of an album. And that's the part that I found out in my last one. Was like, it's just like, I had this budget, and you put it out, and it was like, oh, where's the promotion budget? And, and that's what I kept, like, nickel and diming to get. Yeah. Just posted your lunch, just sending stuff out, and, 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 and the time that you spend, and, uh, if, if you, you want to hire an independent promoter, mm -hmm. you can't go that route. Right. I, I, I checked into that. People, it's a lot of money. It is, yeah. You know, I, I, I couldn't, couldn't really, really, I think that, that your promotion budget should probably, probably as much as your recording budget. budget. Yeah, I agree on that completely. Yeah, I'm, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a whole other thing. thing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. making music. I mean, you got that part down. The marketing promotion stuff. You, 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 I enjoy it. I do. <laughs> I, 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 I just like somebody do this. Somebody book my shows. I, you know, I, 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 I just I, I don't have a, 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 a personality for it. I guess you know, yeah. calling people up and yeah. um, but it's it's uh, it, it, it's changing so much. But I think it's really opened the door for a lot of talented artists that um, maybe wouldn't have been able to get out there and. Make, make music, music. Yeah. so really. it's, there's, there's a lot, lot of stuff that I wish wasn't out there, there. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of stuff that's just such bad music that makes it out on the radio, and you think like, how, how did that, how did that happen? And they, and they spent a hundred grand just, just for the recording budget, budget you know, or mm -hmm. um, a million dollars, I listened to podcasts, podcasts that have spent, it takes like a million dollars just to get like a single out on the radio, like a hit single. That's painful. Same <laughs> <See> here. <laughs> it does. Yeah. They were, they were um, uh, Planet, Planet Money podcast on NPR. I listened, listened to it, and they looked, looked into the, the, the money behind getting, um, I forget who, who what artist was, was, popular, popular you know, mm -hmm. person. And it, was and it was like a million bucks just to get, get that song into out on the charts. Wow. The record company invests in just one song. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Well, there's, there's a lot, lot of other things, things I can think of. I can do with the <laughs> I just have to many followers. <laughs> yeah, really, really. And, and, and I'm, I've seen, have you ever seen her performances? No, uh, no. Well, the, 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 the Tiny, tiny Desk concerts, concerts on the VR they have. Okay, yeah. Watch yourself a little bit. She's on there. Okay. And she plays ukulele. Okay. And the reason I'm at, like, my daughter Katie plays ukulele, so. And there's one song that she does. Called uh, play, play the ukulele, ukulele or something, something like, like that. that. Amanda Palmer does, does and Kate does, does it. And um, she, she did, did it on this, this tiny, tiny desk, desk concert thing. thing. And uh, I'm not looking crazy, crazy about the music. music. I just, I just like, like you know, know, a million bucks. bucks. Wow. What, what, what an amazing, amazing benchmark, benchmark that yeah. set. Um, of course, she had, had some name recognition with her previous band, the Dresden Dresden Dolls. So that, oh, okay. I've heard, heard of them. them. I, mean, I, didn't I didn't make, make the connection, connection at all. So. I didn't either. Uh, it was Amanda Paul. Palmer. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, amazing when you get on there and you start, start looking around and you see some of these projects that get an you know, amazing, amazing amount of funding. funding and yeah. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> 
Sometimes you just never know what catch on. There was my friend actually sent me a Kickstarter link for this guy who wanted to make plastic ukuleles out of this really it was like this really special kind of plastic so that they would be kind of durable through all kinds of weather. It was a really cool idea, like after watching the video. But it didn't make it didn't make it, you know? And yeah. I was, I was really, really disappointed because I was just like, there are a lot of ukulele lovers out there. <laughs> it's it's taken off. I don't know really who, uh, who started, started it, but when you see uh, an editor from, from Pearl Jam, Jam put down an all ukulele album, uh, then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, like well, that's cool, cool. you know? Yeah. Yeah. If Eddie Petter's doing it, I guess it's cool to do. There's something about the sound of ukulele makes it actually, I actually don't like. And this mm. is for, uh, I have a very expensive ukulele, and the reason I got it is because it just had, um, um, it had more of a guitar, guitar sound than the others, others you know? You know? Um, but, but I don't, I don't like that twangy, um, I, guess I guess it wouldn't really, really be considered twangy, twangy but, but just like the high-pitched thing, thing that it has going on, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't excite me. So. <laughs> well, hey, I, I, thank, thank you so much for coming on oh, yeah. and, and being here on the show. I've enjoyed it so much, and your performance is just stellar always. Yeah. And, uh, have a great show tonight. Thank if you. I can't make it there. I'm, I, you know, I wish I could. Um, the other thing, um, and I wanted to, uh, well, in case um, you're, you're joining us next week, we're going to have, um, I'm thinking, who's going to be on? Oh, Fred. Uh, Fred, Fred uh, uh, Gillen Jr. Jr. is going to be on the show. show. And uh, if you, if you want, want to check out um, AcousticSongs.com, um, um, I will have uh, Joy's performance up on the web this week. week. And then uh, Fred, Fred will be on next week. week. And, and check out uh, WNJR.org. Um, I'm your host, Steve Mitchell Bell, Bell and you've been listening to Acoustic Songs Live with Joy Eichen Studio. And Joy, would you uh, mind playing like one song? Take yeah. us out. Yeah, take us out with the song. This is, this is a, a, a song, song that's going to be in the new album. It's called Pick Me Up. Feel like the bank truck running down. Didn't wait a war, just ran and made me down. You know I look both ways, clear my back. Side to side, I see just where I'm at. Hey. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania.